This is the motor for the uh, crystal power cell. When I, when I talked about doing a do-it-yourself video for crystal cells and the little motor, I realized that I needed to come up with a system that would let people replicate this motor, which is the most efficient uh, motor design I've ever come up with in experimenting, but I wanted people to be able to replicate it and get it right. And that's why I went to the 3D printing. Um, the 3D printing allows this motor to be replicated right on. And uh, I'll go over some of the features of this motor um, later. But what I've got here is I've got the motor and it's connected uh, to a small electrolytic capacitor. And between that I've got my um, micro amp uh, meter and I've got a battery. And I let this run through the night like that just to smooth out. And you can see now the amount of energy this motor is using. Well, I hope you can see. Let me zoom in here. So this is the latest project. Um, this little motor I've designed in uh, 3D Studio Max and you can see we have all the different uh, pieces here and these all fit together and what this is going to allow me to do is upload the STL files onto my website and you can all download them and make this exact motor. So for the first time uh, the designs I'm making can be replicated exactly and uh, that's going to be really helpful in this research um, beyond that if you don't own a 3d printer or there's nobody in your community that owns a 3d printer you can uh, go to shapeways and i'll have these parts on shapeways.com and uh, between shapeways or pinoco uh, even if you don't own a 3d printer you can get this stuff printed very very economically so the 3d printers got to the uh, inside part these internal uh, structural supports and they're printing out, and man, is it looking nice. I'm really happy with this printer. It's a really neat experience to see a, a 3D object going from the world of the uh, computer, the virtual world, over here and coming out in the physical world. I've been doing 3D art uh, since the early 90s. And this is the first time one of my 3D objects is coming out into the real world. So, pretty excited about what I can put this uh, to use on. I've got all kinds of ideas for this. So here's the uh, first piece printed off, and I've got to remove the uh, rafting support. And uh, this stuff is kind of fun to remove. It just comes off like uh, Velcro. So Anyway, it's just so cool to realize that this very piece I'm holding here, uh, any of you all could also have printed either on your own printer or uploaded to a service like Shapeways. So, really excited about this. I'm going to get the next uh, half printing. So, we've got the uh, two halves to our rotor. I did need to uh, remove a little bit of material from the pins here, but these pins uh, line up so that we can just snap uh, this together like that. So one interesting thing, uh, when you print an object like this, you have the top surface, the bottom, and the side. But to save uh, material, there's some settings that let you print a filler matrix. And this matrix uh, uses a lot less of the uh, material, but still makes a really strong uh, structure inside. So I just thought that was pretty cool, and that's that's what's going on there. All right, so I've got all the uh, pieces printed out here for the motor, and we got the uh, rotor here. Um, it's all come together very nicely. Uh, you know, this is the first print, so. I'm sure uh, the second um, build on this will come out even better, but I just want to point out that the bobbins here are designed in such a way that this shaft in the back actually mounts through here, and that supports the bobbins all the way around. But the other nice thing about that is these are designed um, to connect to a drill like I've got here. So I've got a 42-gauge uh, uh, quarter-pound roll of copper wire and that roll is coming off the spool right back here in this chair and it feeds up to the uh, little bobbin that's mounted on the drill so just a little demonstration of how this works so I've almost got this uh, one bobbin done okay so this little bobbin is uh, ready to take off and we'll mount it up uh, here in the motor and uh, test it out All right. It's uh, 6.13, um, and I'm going to go ahead and just let this run now. You can see that the capacitor voltage has risen up to 1.64, and uh, that's just um, by generating, using this as a generator, and inputting energy into the capacitor. Um, 
Now we're going to let this just slow down to its base RPM and we're going to let this thing run and you'll see that the voltage drop on the capacitor is very very nominal. It's, it's very slow. Um, this thing's going to just kind of reach a base voltage and hover there for a really long time. But anyway, it's 613 now and um, I've started this on an electrolytic capacitor. That's something to note. This is not a super capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor and I believe that this is a 10 volt 10,000 uh, UF electrolytic. So we're gonna let this run on that and I know from uh, already past experiments on really small ones like this that this is gonna run a really long time but again I started at 613 in the morning I'm letting it run and uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens I'll check this again later. Alright so it's been uh, 10 minutes um, it's now 623. Started this at 613 at 1.6 uh, volts. The, capac the capacitor is stabilized. Um, I think there was some dielectric absorption maybe at the beginning a little bit when it was first climbing up because it actually went up above 1.6 volts. But it's stabilized and uh, it's 1.57677 and this is the actual voltage drop across the capacitor running the motor. So this one's going to break all my previous records for runtime duration on electrolytic capacitor because you can see that this motor could run for hours on this electrolytic capacitor. Watching the voltage drop on this um, is pretty interesting folks. I'm obviously going to do some experiments with recapturing some of the energy from the rotor and feeding that back into the system but that will be in uh, version 2. So I've got some good ideas for that. I'm um, just going to show a couple more things here and wrap this video up. Different metals. Alright, so you can see here I've got my son holding a piece of uh, copper and a piece of magnesium. We've connected that directly to the motor and uh, it's powering the motor. It's starting up slowly but it's been gaining speed here. And uh, this is one of the, uh, the first motors I've ever made that I could do this with. Um, just hold two pieces of metal, one in each hand, and, and run a motor. But uh, anyway, Pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and do a quick test now on the actual uh, power draw on this and see if we can get a, an accurate reading. Okay, so I just wanted to show um, this running on a carrot cell. <laughs> just put uh, two really short pieces of uh, copper or a piece of copper wire, piece of magnesium uh, ribbon. Really short. These only go into this carrot, I don't know, eighth inch, no more than a quarter inch. But what I just want to show is the rotor starting up and running on that. You know, we've all seen the schoolroom uh, lemon battery where the acidity in the, the lemon um, between the galvanic reaction and the electrodes can power a little clock or LCD. But the beauty of a, a motor kit like this is that it is just so efficient that you can run it on next to nothing. All right, so I've got this running on the uh, carrot cell here. So I've got the carrot cell here, I've got my micro amp meter between, a small electrolytic capacitor just to smooth it out between these two so I get an accurate reading. I've let the motor run for a good, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so at least here, just to smooth everything out, let it get up to speed. And uh, you can see that it's pulling one to one and a half micro amps. Um, by far the most efficient motor that I've built and I'm just so excited folks because of the nature of this uh, 3D printing uh, it, you guys can replicate this with the same results I'll share the source to the wire you can get a roll of this wire for I think seven bucks or so but I'll give all the links to all the parts the exact magnets, the exact wire and the exact parts and uh, we can print one of these up and you can get the same results but you can see here I got the carrot electrolytic in between so the, the magnesium copper here is feeding in a current of one to one and a half microamps and at one to one and a half microamps this is the RPM speed that this motor runs at so very uh, encouraging I'm really looking forward to experimenting with some uh, recapture of the energy on the rotor to feed back into the system because we're so close to zero here folks when you're that close to zero it's not going to take much to recapture to uh, to boost this efficiency even more so 
Anyway, that's where we're at with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and refine this so that the files, the STL files I upload for 3D printing, um, are a little more refined. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, the microamp motor. Um, this thing can probably run on less than a microamp. And the RPM would obviously be a little less, but. And uh, so that's where it's at, folks. Let's all keep experimenting.